Minister aware of recent comments suggesting order, that... Order, the House will come to order. The Is the Prime Banks. Minister aware of recent comments suggesting that the 1950s were a time of great advancement for Australia? <laughs> a golden age for Australia. Can the Prime Minister tell the House whether it's the government's intention to pursue similar outcomes? The Honourable the Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, in the last week we've had one of those rare philosophic outbursts from the opposition. <laughs> And we had some remarks by the Leader of the Opposition and the Member for Bennelong at a philosophical def uh, level which couldn't have made the differences between the Government and the Opposition clearer than they did. They started off, of course, uh, with the Leader of the Opposition, with his back turned as usual, talking about, I never learned respect at school. I never learned respect at school. I never learned respect at school. You see, I should never have said in front of Her Majesty, the Queen of Australia, that Australia was now trading with the Asia-Pacific area. I should never have said that we have dependence, independence from Britain and Europe as Europe joined the common market and as Australia trades now 70 to 80 per cent of its imports and export with the Asia-Pacific area, that that remark, that independence to the Queen of Australia, the Queen of this country, of this continent, that I should have had more respect. How dare I even how dare I even reflect modestly on the old links with Britain, on the British bootstrap stuff. And then, of course, we had then a flurry of comment by the member for Ben Long about the 50s, what a very good period it was. A very, very good period, he said. A golden age. Now, this is the period, this is the period, Mr Speaker, when GDP per head is, was half what it was now, when commodities which were occupied 85% of, uh, of, of our exports, Order. when telephones were half what they were now, Order. when there were half as many cars per thousand people of population, where pensions were half their real value of today, when there were 10 children per thousand going to universities instead of 30, this was the golden age. This was the golden age, of course, when Australia stagnated. This is the golden age when it was injected with a near-lethal dose of fogeyism by the Conservative Party's opposite. When they put the country into neutral and where we very gently ground to a halt in nowhere land, nowhere land of the early 1980s, with a dependency on commodities that wouldn't pay for our imports. This is the golden age. This is the golden age when vast numbers of Australians never got a look in, that the women who didn't get a look in that had no, no equal rights and no equal pay, where migrants were factory fodder, where Aborigines were excluded from the system, where we had these xenophobes running around about Britain and bootstraps, and that awful cultural cringe under Menzies which held us back for nearly a generation. That awful cultural cringe. Well, Mr Speaker, I said today at the press club that one of my colleagues, the Minister for Administrative Services, Senator Balkus, has always been at the Cabinet about the future development of the old Parliament House and about whether it ought to be a constitutional or, or museum of Australian cultural history. And we thought we could basic, basically make the changes, put some of the cultural icons of the 50s I down there. The, the, <laughs> the Morphy Richards toaster, <laughs> the Qualcast mower, the, uh, a pair of uh, heavily protected slippers, the Astor TV, the AWA radio, radiogram, and of course, John Hewson, the member for Wentworth, and the member for Bennelong. You could go there as well. And when the kids come and look at them and they'll say, gee, Mum, is that what it was like then? And the two John can say, no, kids, no, kids, this is the future. This is the future. And there, there they are. This is the future. Back down the time tunnel to the future. There they are. Now, the fact is, you see, you see, i tell you this, when I was told about I didn't learn respect at school, I tell you I learned one thing, I learned about self-respect and self-regard for Australia. Yeah. Not about some cultural cringe to a country, to a country which decided not to defend the Malaysian Peninsula, not to worry about Singapore, not to give us our troops back to keep, to keep ourselves free from Japanese domination, this was the country, 
This was the country that you people wedded yourself to. And even as they walked out on you and joined the common market, even as they walked out on you and joined the common market, you were still looking for your MBEs and your knighthoods and all the rest of the regalia that come with it. You would take Australia right back down the time tunnel to the cultural fringe where you've always come from. And that's why your fight back document has exactly ordered. There is far too much noise. Order. Members on my left, the member for Dundas will cease interjecting. I think the member for Benelong is going to have a heart attack if his face goes any better, so he, he might cease interjecting too. The members on my right will cease interjecting as well. The same old fogies who doff their lid and tug the forelock to the British establishment who now try and grind down Australian kids by denying them a technical school education that want to put a tax on the back of the poor. The same old sterile ideology that's going to produce fight back that produced the Thatcherite policies of the late 1970s, the same old fogeyism of the 1950s. We won't have a bar in it, bar of it. You can go back to your 50s, to your nostalgia, to your Menzies, the Caseys and the whole lot. They, they were not aggressively Australian, they were not aggressively proud of our culture, and we'll have no bar of you or your sterile ideology. Order, the House will come to order. Members on my right will cease interjecting. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I see the Max Skelly speechwriter is being put to good use. You have to read your jokes. Thanks. You have to read his jokes, Mr Speaker, for Max Skelly speechwriter. My question without notice is to the Prime Minister. Order. My question. The House will come to order. 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 The House will come to order. If the member for if the member for Benelong interjects again, I will deal with him. The House will come to order. Members on both sides will cease interjecting. I name the honourable member for Gibson. The honourable member for Gibson. Gibson being suspended from the service. If, 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 if the honourable. If the Honourable Member for Gippsland wishes to withdraw the remark, if the Honourable Member for Gippsland wishes to withdraw the remark, does the Honourable Member wish to withdraw? Withdrawn. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question, without notice, is again to the Prime Minister. Is the Prime Minister aware that the 3.9 million taxpayers who earn less than $21,000 are mostly students, women? Farmers, the retired, pensioners and beneficiaries. So simply, Prime Minister, why have you abandoned these people by respecting your tax cuts to those on incomes greater than $20,700? Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister. What? I mean, he's, he's on their back with a consumption tax. He's on their back with a consumption tax. He's got the gall to ask me about their, about their fortunes. He's going, to hit those, he's going to hit all of those taxpayers with a consumption tax and then barely cover the compensation with a tax cut. No discretionary additions to outlays like we have from 30 to 20 per cent. No increase in the tax-free threshold other than to compensate for the consumption tax. And he thinks he has some sort of virtue on his side. I mean, where do you get off? Where do you get off? <laughs> the Honourable Member for Cornwall. Order! Members on my left will seat interjecting. Order! Three times. The House will come to order. The Leader of the Opposition will seat interjecting. The Member for Cornwall group think is the slasher government expenditure have a contract.